Yo, what's up? It's your boy, E.T. Welcome to another edition of Mass Impact, the educational podcast. Now, look, the reason why I started this, I truly believe that education is the way to close the gap, the wealth gap, the digital divide gap, the opportunity gap. Look, the American dream gap. Can I be honest? Everybody's not experiencing the American dream in the way it's supposed to be experienced. So the reason why we started the Mass Impact, the educational podcast, is to close that gap. Now, look, mass is simple. It means motivate, actionable steps, which means what? We're going to give strategies every week. So we're not just going to motivate you and inspire you, which is important, but we're going to give you actionable steps. And look, this is a support system, y'all. Thus, mass. It's your boy, E.T. Now you know. Let's go. What up? What up? What's up? It's your boy, E.T. Hey, super pumped up, super excited. Uh, another mass impact, not just a mass impact podcast, but all of us are literally making a massive impact in the world daily. All right, I got some heavy hitters with me. Um, we got a special guest, too, all right? But got Katie, got Vondale, got Sam, myself, and we got a special guest for you guys uh, coming up. Just real quick, you know, if there was ever a time with what's going on in the world right now where we need to be motivated, you know, where we need to be inspired, um, where we just need hope, you know, that things are going to get better, you know, um, is 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 actually now. And then more importantly, not only do we need to get motivated, we we need to actually apply the principles so that we can get these action uh, steps moving, right? That's important. A lot of times people get motivated, people get inspired, but they don't move. They don't take the steps and apply the steps, right? These actionable steps. And then more importantly, um, we need we need that support system, you know, more than we've ever needed before. Uh, so we got a special guest. Um, as always, I'm going to throw it over to Katie. Katie, what in the world uh, are we talking about today and uh, what kind of change do we look to bring to the world? Yeah, I'm really excited about our conversation today. Um, in our last episode, we talked a lot about different community work that was happening. Specifically, we talked about trauma in communities and gun violence and how can we be um, supportive to our communities and help with prevention. And so we got on this conversation about mentorship that we just, at the end of the conversation said, we've got to keep this one going. Like this is where uh, the conversation really needs to be right now. And how do we talk about mentorship and education um, as a way to make really big impact? And so Vondale, I'm going to let you introduce our special guest today because um, major, major uh, impact is about to happen as we talk about mentorship with him too. Hey, man, I'm super excited uh, for Ian Brock. He is actually changing the game in terms of what he's doing in the space. Uh, he's a 17-year-old Chicagoan who believes he can change the world through inspiration, entrepreneurship, and computer science. Not only does he believe it, he actually is changing the world. Yes. And let me say this before, before he speaks. Yeah. Like, man, this guy... He's interviewed Oprah Winfrey. He, he's he been with the Steve Harvey. He's about to speak at the camp uh, next week. Uh, he's featured on McDonald's. He was in a Nike magazine here in Chicago, first magazine ever with me. And I saw him and I'm like, man, he's 17. He got me looped by a whole decade, a whole world. But just super excited about the message, the ministry, the time and the effort that he's given into the space. I want everybody to virtually welcome Ian Brock. Welcome, brother. Yes, Ian. Thank you so much. Thank I'm you. glad to have you. Mr. Vondale, I just want to thank you so much for this opportunity. We need more mentors like you, especially in our communities, especially during these times. Thank you, Miss Katie and Miss Samantha. We had a great conversation earlier today. Mr. Eric Thomas, Mr. E.T., I've been dreaming for this moment for the last 13 years. I don't we think here. you understand we how here. much of an we impact. Here now. <laughs> We're finally here. You've played such a huge impact in my life. Let me just tell you this. When I was four years old, my dad, before he started getting ready for work every single day shaving, he would play YouTube videos on his BlackBerry, download them, turn them into MP3s, having Tony Robbins, Pastor Joel Osteen, and that last person. Guess who it was? It was you. It was Dr. Eric Thomas. 
And so every single morning before I was going to school, I would listen to your messages subconsciously. And so one day my dad was shaving. And so he he heard this little voice. He was like, who is talking outside in the hallway? And so he came out, peeked out around the corner and he saw it was me. I was getting ready for school, playing with some toys. But your message was playing. And while the message was playing, I was reciting those words verbatim. And so that was the moment where my parents knew that personal development was going to play a key role in my life. And so ever since then, I've just consumed, been consuming and watching YouTube videos, reading motivational books. Wow. And so I'm just so excited to be here today. Thank you for this opportunity. It's an honor. Hey, let me tell you something. I, I wouldn't know if you was telling the truth or not until you said Blackberry. I said, oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> Blackberry. <laughs> That's what funny. My dad was a Blackberry oh, fanatic. He did not like smartphones until he got on social media, but that's a story for another day. <laughs> yeah, I can I just it. jump in real Please. quick and, and just say when we talk about mentorship and everybody know like that's what God put me on earth to do. And as I look out, I'm always thinking, who are we passing the batons to? Who are we empowering to take on the next generation of young people? And when I see Ian and, and heard his story, I had to bring him in. And he spoke virtually to our young men. And it was so powerful. I mean, and to so much so that we had to do a replay in a physical class with his video virtually. That's how amazing it was. And so, Ian, if you can just talk to us and tell us, how did this all get started with Dream Hustle Code? And just tell us about some of the things that you have going on. So honestly, it all started with my 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 roots of wanting to help people. Ever since I was four years old or actually two years old, I've been always driven by helping those around me and helping those who are less fortunate. When I was two years old, I remember like it was yesterday or my dad tells me all the time. He said that we were selling brownies. I was helping my sister raise money for kids in Africa to build water wells. When I was four years old, I would get excess amount of gifts for Christmas and my birthday. I would take that to the hospital near my house for those kids who needed it more than I did during the holiday. So all the work that I've been done over the last nine years throughout my entire life has been focused on helping those, inspiring them, showing them different possibilities, but really getting them to the point where they want to be by sharing my experiences and some of the things that have worked for me. So Dream Hustle Code, that was really just we wanted to show kids that you don't have to just be a basketball player, a rapper. You don't have to sell drugs to be successful. There are opportunities for you in the tech space. And so how I got started was it was because of a video that my mom came across on Facebook that talked about the importance of learning how to code. Now, I don't know about you, but growing up in Chicago, I could care less about technology and computer science. I wanted to go to the NBA. I looked up to Derrick Rose. My dad talked about Michael Jordan. Mr. E.T., I know you say you don't like Michael Jordan, but that was my household when I was younger. I know oh, no, the I didn't say, yo, he, he, no, that's Michael Jordan that. fan. Oh, yeah, Michael Jordan, Jordan fan. fan. Oh, hey. Oh, yeah. <laughs> hey, that's LeBron James. I'm sorry you you got this wrong. That's, I'm not really into LeBron James. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I understand, but basketball was my life. Also, rap music. My dad played Kanye and Jay-Z all the time. And so while I was watching this video, at first I thought it was boring because I didn't see anybody who that looked like me or somebody that I could relate to. But what grabbed my attention was the fact that I saw two-time NBA champ and Hall of Famer Mr. Chris Bosh, former Miami Heat basketball player. So I heard him talk about his experiences with learning how to code and how he thought coding was cool. And also he said that being smart was cool. So hearing from somebody that not only looked like me, but somebody I could relate to, that's what made the difference. So ever since then, if it wasn't for him being in that video, honestly, we probably wouldn't be here on this podcast today because I would have never started Dream Hustle Code had I not seen him in that video talking about the importance of learning how to code. Yeah, that's what's up. So, so talk to me though, you know, about just being a kid in Chicago, you know, what are the things that outside of basketball, you know, that kind of grab your attention and how were you able to, despite the things that grab your attention through mentorship, how were you able to shift, you know, or maybe not shift, maybe you stay focused from the beginning, but talk to other young people about being in an environment and not letting that environment control you, uh, but right. using the environment to take you to that next level. 
So throughout my life, I was blessed. We weren't blessed with money by far. We weren't wealthy. We weren't rich at all. But I was blessed with two amazing parents who raised me in a way to become a man of honor, a man of integrity, a man of discipline, and a man of going after whatever it is that you want, no matter how hard it, how long, how hard it is. And so my parents surrounded me with great mentors. When I was five years old, they put me in martial arts. My Kung Fu teacher taught me the importance of discipline, the importance of knowing how to protect yourself, but also knowing how to use your body as a weapon, but limiting that weapon when not necessary. Fighting is not always the first answer. Sometimes you can talk yourself out of a situation, but it is important to learn how to protect yourself. Basketball. My parents put me in basketball when I was seven or eight years old with AAU programs. My my coach, my basketball coach, Coach Davis, he taught me the importance of being fearless and not not letting fear hold you back from becoming the best version of yourself. So I was blessed to have people around me that kept me in line, kept kept me in check, and going forward towards my goals and going forward to becoming the best version of myself. But in terms of you talked about staying focused and getting back into you know not letting those things distract you honestly it's tough in the city because they're in the midst of all this positivity the only thing the only thing that's talked about the most is negative they shine the light on all the negative situations all the gun violence all the kids who are causing trouble and so for that it's honestly disheartening right at times i think to myself man is this really like, is is what I'm doing really worth it if there's still kids out here shooting each other because they don't have any hope? But that also drives me because, again, I'm a selfless person. I want to see others succeed. And so seeing that there's still a need that needs to be, that or there's still something, a need that needs to be filled, that's what drives me to continue doing the work that I'm doing every single day. But, I mean, it, it does get tough. And as we've seen over the last couple months, We've seen all this violence. We've heard all these discussions about how they even talk about our generation negatively all the time. And so here, having that being bombarded, it is a negative cycle. But at the same time, what helps me is just reminding myself of what my end goal is and also having those mentors around me that keep me in line. That's what really has keep me focused. Amazing. I'm just really um, struck by how humble you are too. So we had, we had the opportunity to have a conversation before we started recording here too. And oh my goodness, he kept saying, I don't want to brag on myself. And you know, Vondale had to pull all this amazing <laughs> stuff out. So um, I'm wondering about, because there's lots of teachers that listen here, Ian. So um, I'm wanting to know about maybe a little bit about your education background and like what have you had teachers that have been positive mentors for you or if you were to speak to teachers today, what would you say to them that would be, um, you know, that you believe would be helpful for students that are sitting in their classrooms today that maybe like you have been discouraged or have these big dreams to change the world? How can teachers step in to be the kind of mentors and supporters for students like you that, that you need? Right. So I've actually learned to respect teachers a lot. Like teachers don't get the credit that they deserve. They're underpaid. They're they honestly they don't get the respect that they deserve because in the beginning of the pandemic, I started I started teaching computer science and personal development classes. I was teaching classes five to six hours a day, Monday through Friday for 16 weeks in a row with no break. Right. And so interacting with kids younger than me, looking at them as really my little brothers and sisters, getting a chance to interact with them and seeing how my words are really powerful and can change their mood at any second. I, I realize how important a teacher's job is. And so one thing I would say is for teachers, I had a lot of great teachers. I would say my third grade teacher, Miss Magina, she was instrumental in me developing my independence because I grew up with uh, what you would call a tiger mom. And so she was a mom where you had to be per perfect. Anything short of perfect was failure, right? And so <laughs> I have funny stories about, but we'll get into that another time. But she would have me perfect my schoolwork even when it was already good enough. She would still make me go that extra mile. And so my third grade teacher kind of forced or taught myself and my parents that, hey, in the real world, you can't go out there and protect your child. He's going to have to learn for himself. So you can't help him necessarily on the test or the project. He has to do it on his own. I had a teacher in seventh grade, Miss Cox. Now, she was one of my favorite teachers. She she was my social studies teacher. And so 
she was one of those teachers that didn't necessarily assign us a lot of homework, but she gave us the opportunity to speak our ideas and speak our thoughts. Like we would talk about real world situations, talk about politics, talk about what was happening in our city. And we would have group discussions and she allowed us to have a voice that empowered me and gave me confidence to 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 think or to speak on how I was feeling, speak on my thoughts, speak on what I thought was true, what I thought was false. And so she really did give a uh, did do a great job on allowing us to speak freely without feeling like we were going to be judged on our own words. But for teachers out there, understand, I will say this. Sometimes we do forget this, but your words do hold value. Like what you say to a child when they're young could mean the difference between them going on to being successful, being a successful doctor, lawyer, basketball player, entrepreneur in computer science or them turning down a darker path. Because honestly, whether you know it or not, kids are listening, right? They may not look like it. It may look like we're falling asleep in our chairs. It may look like we're tuning you out. But at the end of the day, we really do take your words to heart. So everything you say matters and every lesson that you ingrain with us is valuable. You know, I wanted to ask you something real quick. So you talked about, um, you didn't say it, but as a teacher, I think it's important to use non-traditional tools to teach mm -hmm. right and you talked about learning academics from bosch a video mm -hmm. uh, apparently so a lot of teachers just come in with the traditional met methods right right why is it so important to bring in non-traditional methods as well as using figures that students already identify with as successful in a classroom setting that may not you know bosch isn't necessarily considered academic mm -hmm. right be that's that's a great question um it's honestly what we found success through our classes because if you can relate to a kid it'll make it that much more easier for them to understand i, I break this down all the time or my dad tells me this all the time it's the difference between a parent telling a child something and their friend telling them that same message see like my with our parents i'm a teenager you know my dad always has this thing. He says, you don't understand because your frontal lobe isn't developed. He says that all the time. But he says, when a parent tells you something, yeah, you may be hearing them, but you might not be listening because it's your parent. They're always saying things all the time and you kind of block them out. But when another child explains something to them, that same exact lesson they're able to understand it because it's coming from somebody that's at the same level as them. So having those figures or having those figures that they can look up to you are they already look up to that person. And if that person is delivering a message that is in line with what you are teaching, that kid will think, oh, what Miss So-and-so said is right. Oh, what Miss So-and-so or Mr. So-and-so said, that's correct. And so being able to relate it with celebrities is important, but also video games and music. In my classes, we tie music all the time. We play music all the time. I even show videos of some entrepreneurs in the music industry talking about some of the same lessons that I share. Video games. Uh, computer science, it sounds like a big word, but when I tell a kid, you can learn how to create your own video games, learning how to create your own 2K, own GTA, your own Fortnite, by learning how to code, a kid is thinking, man, I can do that? Oh, let me get into this. And so finding a way to relate whatever message, whatever lesson that you want to that child, relating it to real world, either people, activities, or real world ideas that relate to them, it just, it seeps on a, it, they're able to understand it on a deeper level. And so, like you said, that's, that's super important because we're, we're now in a different generation. We're the first generation that was born with technology and use, and we're using it every single day. So those traditional teaching mes methods that were created almost hundreds of years ago, they need to be reevaluated and they need to be changed in order to fit this new world and this new society. Definitely. Yeah, thanks for sharing that. I'll let you say, I just wanted to also point out, you said um, seeing people that looked like you as well. And so, and that was impactful for you. So I often say that with books. So I, I want to keep reminding those teachers, make sure there are books in your classroom. You heard Ian say how impactful it was for him to see someone that looked like him and that he was inspired by. And so our books need to be filled uh, with characters and stories about um, people that students, all of their students can see themselves in as well. So thank you for bringing that up, Ian, too, that that was impactful for you. I actually got a question um, for everyone here. And you it's 
mainly focused on mentorship, but what would you say is or are some of the challenges with mentoring students, um, especially in today's climate with all the negativity out here? What would you say is the biggest challenge that you see when trying to mentor those students into believing themselves or believing in themselves and going after their goals and dreams? Yeah, well, I would say attention span. Really, really, <laughs> really, 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 really small, like a size of a pea. So it's almost like you almost got to do TikTok teaching lessons, <laughs> like mm. really quick, fast, get in, get the information out and then hop to the next one really, really quick. And I think, you know, in, in some ways, because everybody's not seeing technology as a tool of enhancement, we using right. it as a tool to, you know, denigrate ourselves or to not figure out how we can take this and teach through it or grow or develop. And so a lot of our students have to be reminded that this is a tool that we should be using to make our, our cultures better, to make money, to, to be creative, uh, to express ourselves. And oftentimes I figure that's the barrier too. Um, you know, we'd be sometimes in different sessions where we invite somebody very powerful. And you'll see a kid like on a phone like this and a person would be up speaking. And I'll have to say, excuse me, <laughs> you missing important information that'll change your life forever because of this device. So I think for me, I think the biggest barrier with your generation is just how do we continue to figure out the attention span situation to engage their attention and keep it. Okay. What about you, Miss Katie or Miss Samantha? What would you say is like the biggest challenge in terms of mentoring students in my generation? Yeah, that was, that was good. And I think the big piece about the phone is not just as teachers being frustrated by it um, or even like making them put it away all the time, but helping be a part of teaching them appropriate use and how can we make sure that we use it in a way that can be just like you just said, Bundy, like beneficial in so many ways, but also make sure it's put away and something powerful is happening in front of you. And that powerful thing can be a math lesson by your regular math teacher. And that's okay too, you know, but that is information you have to have so that you can pass, even if you don't like the class, so you can pass that class, so you can graduate high school, so you can get to the future that you deserve to have. So helping um, as teachers, helping our students to understand how to use the technology when it can be powerful and how to put it away when we need that powerful thing that's in front of us, which again, can be your simple lesson from your teacher, um, whether you like the teacher or not, right? But we got to help as teachers get that message across to all of our students for sure. Okay. I would say in addition to what was already um, stated is um, a two-way mentorship relationship, right? And so I think while we're talking about technology, right, the access to technology is probably at its greatest point that it has been. And so um, what I see is even if there are like mentors who are on board or whatnot, just like also, um, I guess the, the skill set of even like communicating or pursuing a mentorship relationship as a mentee. So like what questions do I ask? Right. Like how do I gain, you know, what I need to personally grow out of this uh, mentorship relationship? And so. I see that just in terms of like maybe the mentee not knowing exactly how to pursue a mentor relationship to um, help them to their full capacity. Okay, awesome. Now, what about you, Mr. Thomas? What would you say is the biggest challenge that you face when mentoring kids in my generation? Yeah, I, I think the biggest you know challenge, um, you know, is students understanding that it's my job to help you with the self discovery process. And I think because of the, because of technology, we are bombarded and exposed to so much stimuli, you know, so many other, uh, you know, examples that sometimes it's difficult for people to see their genius because they're so concerned about, you know, fitting in and being what everybody else is and having what everybody else has. So, so I know it's the dichotomy of being exposed to so much and being able to, you know, you got to understand, you know, growing up in my era without technology, you know, you only know people who are in your same economic, socioeconomic status. Like if I grew up, you know, on the south side of Chicago, you know, 79th and Halston, well, that was our only reality was 79th and Halston. So, so we weren't necessarily trying to, like, we didn't have the challenge of trying to be like people on the West Coast and, 
people, you know, on, on uh, uh, down south and, you know, people, you know, across the country, you know, so it was like we're being bombarded. It's a blessing to be exposed to so much. But how does one find themselves, you know, in all of this stimuli? And so for me, just trying to teach kids, you are special. You are unique. You got it going on. Fighting with the other things that they watch and they're exposed with that's telling them to lose their identity and become, you know, what somebody else uh, is. You know, for me, that that's the that's the biggest challenge, because I, I just feel like when you know who you are and you have confidence and you believe in yourself, you deal with challenges in a way that you don't deal with them when you have a low self-esteem. You know, when you're constantly trying to uh, when you have a, a, a pleaser personality. So for me, it is how does one embrace technology and embrace everything it has to offer without losing their own self-identity? I think that's powerful. Wow. Because I, that's actually I'm not perfect. I actually struggled with that myself in the past. You get so caught up not only in what's going on outside of your world, but you get so caught up in trying to please others who are around you, but not realizing, especially in high school, those same people won't even be in your life in two, three, four, five years, yeah. maybe even a couple months. I got to take him on the road with me, Vidal. I got to take him <laughs> on the road. He's talking that talk. Hey, 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 can I ask a quick question while we have you here? Is if you can just talk to us just about some of the things that that you have going on. I know you're going back to earn your leisure again. What you say tomorrow? Uh, yes, you got so, the, you got essence right. coming up. Talk to us. Mm -hmm. Let us know what you have going up. How can teachers get a hold of you if they want you to come speak or share? Do you have any big events that you're planning? Talk to us. So there's a lot. Um, let let's take a step back. So this past. Two months ago, I was invited to speak at the Global Entrepreneurship Congress in Saudi Arabia to talk about purpose-driven entrepreneurship. And so because of that relationship, I was invited to speak at another entrepreneurship event in Thailand this fall. So that's an amazing opportunity. I'm so blessed to have that. Thank God for everything. Today, I actually have, and also another amazing opportunity came from that same Saudi Arabia trip. Where later on today, I'm going to be speaking at the Junior Achievement Me Mexico virtual conference with over 5,000 students in North America and South America. Tomorrow, because I'm a part of the McDonald's Future 22 program, I'm actually going to be interviewed by Earn Your Leisure, Mr. Troy and Mr. Rashad. We're going to have a 45-minute, hour-long discussion about change, game-changing and also making impact in the world. This Saturday... I'm flying out to Atlanta to speak at the Steve Harvey Mentorship Program. This is going to be my second time in person, fifth time total virtually and in person. And so that's going to be an amazing experience talking to kids my age. But I don't necessarily like talking at people. I like having conversations. So that'll be a great conversation. And then later on this month, I'm going to fly out to Essence Fest uh, because we're hosting our uh, Future 22 Game Changers McDonald's event out at Essence Fest where Kiki Palmer will be the main host. And so it's going to be a lot of amazing opportunities this fall. I also have an HBCU speaking tour where I'm going to be speaking on the Systems for Success tour. I call it the Systems for Success because I found that, and it's crazy how Mr. Eric Thomas, he actually helped me create the Systems for Success. I use some of his own lessons, but people always talk at people and they say, you got to be great. You can do this. But kids my age, we want to figure out, all right, what can we do to be great? And so I created the systems for success. I didn't take I didn't come up with it in my mind. I just took different pieces from different sectors and things that work for myself from goal setting to time management to affirmations, meditations, all of those different things all in one going on the road to speaking at HBCUs to freshmen, because as a freshman, we have all these all this freedom. We're away from our parents. We have all this free time, but we don't necessarily know how to manage it. So I'm going on the road on the HBCU tour this fall to share with kids some of the things that will work with me at four to seven different HBCUs. So it's a lot of amazing things. Again, I'm blessed and fortunate to be in this space. Thank God. Thank my parents. Thank my community. Thank you, Mr. Von Dale. Thank you, Mr. Eric Thomas, for continuing to inspire not only me, but millions of kids around the I've globe. I've heard that I didn't. I just found out about you today. I don't know who. <laughs> Uh -huh. I, don't, I don't know who is responsible for me finding out this late. Okay, <laughs> we're gonna figure it out who. And, uh, 
area of trouble when I figure it out. Uh, but I definitely would love to get your contact information, give you a call, and um, potentially, you know, it looks like your schedule is super busy. Uh, but I would love to partnership with you and work with you. Um, I think it would benefit so many people. Um, and also, Absolutely. I just finished doing uh, Earn Your Leisure two days mm -hmm. ago. I, we pre-recorded. Mm -hmm. I, mean, I went to the studio, but we pre-recorded. My book is coming out uh, in September, mm -hmm. so they're going to release it in September. So make sure you tell Troy and uh, Rashad, your boy, E.T. said, what's up? Of course, of course. Are you going to be at InvestFest in Atlanta? I will. I will be there. I will be okay. there. Okay. Yeah. I might have to make that trip then. <laughs> okay. Well, hey, don't make the trip. Um, Chicago, September 23rd. I'm doing an event that hosts over 4,000 people. You just need to come and keynote. So um, okay. don't come, don't worry about that. Come on right home. Uh, where, where, where are we? Um, I know we're on the south side, my dear, but where's the church? Yeah, so matter of fact, July 16th is a champs conference. It's three minutes away from the event he's talking about in yeah. September. So yeah, I'll okay. bring you all, I'll bring you up to speed with that. But Oh, that's yeah, I'll be there for that. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. let's connect. Absolutely. Oh, this is... Just oh, the beginning, man. I imagine. Oh, this is unbelievable. Yes. yes. Yeah, this is, 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 is there um, information of how our followers can follow you? Of course. So you can go to our website, dreamhustlecode.com. That's all information with Dream Hustle Code. You can follow me on Instagram at Dream Hustle Code, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. Uh, for all the students out there, if Generation Z, you lock, if you're listening, you can follow me on Instagram at Ian underscore underscore Brock. I love co having conversations with people, getting close and helping people, but also just talking because sometimes feel people feel like they're not being heard enough and they don't have anyone to speak to. Mm -hmm. I want to be that voice for those who need somebody to, to just talk to. And also for somebody mentioned earlier, for anyone that wants to sign up for speaking engagements, you can go to Ian Talks. Dot com or just go to dreamhustlecode.com and it'll say if sign up for speaking engagements somewhere at the top. I appreciate you all. Thank you so much for this opportunity. It's a blessing. I got to meet one of my idols. We had a great conversation. I got to meet you, Miss Samantha, you, Miss Katie, Mr. Von Dale. It's always a pleasure working with you. And I'm just honored that you've been able to take me under your wing and just open the doors to some amazing opportunities. Awesome. Ian, I think that E might have went to go sign up right now. You see his, <laughs> his uh, picture disappear. <laughs> I think he might have went over there immediately. <laughs> I love it. Thank you for being here, Ian. And again, you know, we have a large audience of teachers. So I just want to speak to the teachers again. Be inspired by this young man of this generation, right? Let's think about the way that we talk about this next generation and, um, and the way that we have high expectations for them and that we believe in them and let Ian be this wonderful example of what they're capable of. Um, and, and, you know, be inspired by ways that, uh, that you can be a part of continuing to mentor the students that are in your classrooms, because they are just the next, the next ones that we may have here that are off changing the world. That's what the kids are doing right now. And so they need teachers that are going to believe in them to be able to do that. Yeah, Absolutely. Yeah, I'm super. In, hey, I'm super inspired, man. It, I mean, I, to be to have the opportunity to talk to, you know, the next um, change agent, the next, you know, twenty years from now, thirty years from now, forty years from now, influencer, you know, is unbelievable. You know, to be able to look at a young Garvey, a young X, a young Dr. Martin Luther King. You know, and know that you'll be um, responsible for changing the world. It's just a privilege and honor for me to uh, lay my eyes on you. You know, if you um, yeah, if you know anything about, you know, us understanding the importance of, you know, just the next generation, and like Vidal said, knowing who is going to bring about change and being able to help in that process is is unbelievable. Absolutely, and I want to say one last thing uh, to all the teachers out there. I am not the only one out there. There are other gems. There are other diamonds out there in the rough. We just need to take the time to look for them and to cultivate them. I'm not, my parents tell me this all the time, but there are others out there just like me who are trying to do amazing things or who want to do amazing things. They just need somebody to believe in them and they need somebody to guide them along their journeys to getting to where they want to go. So thank you again for this opportunity. It's a blessing. It's a humbling experience. And I'm just, I'm excited to see what we can come up with in the future. Love it. 
Hey, mass impact today. Mass impact. Mass Mass impact. impact. Keep up the great work. We're excited to watch you to continue to grow and lead for sure. Thanks, Ian. We appreciate it, man. Thank you for giving us your time today. Absolutely. Blessings to you. And uh, you giving me another job. Uh, We need to go out there and try to find, like, the Professor X. We need to find the other X-Men that are out there. You know, of course. We need to figure out who they are, where they are, and bring them all together. You know, so uh, thank you for your time. Um, again, guys, don't get discouraged. Today has to be a day of hope and inspiration to know that mm-hmm. there yeah. are many kids out there that want to learn. In the traditional format, perhaps not. Mm-hmm. The way we did it 100 years ago, perhaps not. But they want to learn, and it is our responsibility not to give up on them, yep. but to continue to grow professionally ourselves to get tapped into this particular generation so that we can be relevant and get the tools we need to help them to succeed. Again, Mass Impact, thank you all for tuning in. Uh, make sure you go back and listen to the other episodes, continue to support us, and uh, we'll see you guys next week. Welcome back, everybody, to another edition of B's Office Hours. Come on into the principal's office and let's chat. Of course, this is brought to you by Mass Impact, the education podcast. And today's topic is super interesting to me as a lifelong coach. We're bringing in these ideas of coaching and mentorship into the classroom, and I'm super excited to break this topic down with you. Now, this topic is real change by mentoring and education. How do we make that real change? How do we create real change in our classrooms? And how do we do it through using mentorship in the classroom? Now we had a super special guest today, phenomenal young man by the name of Ian Brock. He's 17 years old from Chicago, and he is out there doing the thing. He's changing the world day by day as a part of his organization, Dream Hustle Code. He's a humble young man, and he can inspire the best out of anybody. Now him, along with our other co-hosts, they really broke this topic down in this episode today. He started us off by reminding us that there is hope for the future, and it lies within the young people that we invest in in our classrooms and in our communities. It's so funny, I went back to my hometown not too long ago, Huntsville, Alabama, and I was a gymnast, so I spent every waking hour in my gymnastics gym when I was growing up back there. And I went back and I knew nobody, and nobody knew me. I didn't remember the staff, I didn't know any of the parents, I didn't know any of the kids, nobody knew me. And what it made me realize was that other people have taken, quote unquote, my place in that gym now. I'm not as influential there as I used to be. Why? Because I've moved on. I'm not living there anymore. I'm not within that community as much as I used to be. Somebody else is. And so if I really wanted to make an impact on that community that lasted, I couldn't just make an impact while I was there. I had to pass that on to somebody. So who are you passing the baton to in your classroom? Who are you passing the baton to in your community? This was a point that Von Dale brought up. He said, who are you passing the baton to as you mentor young people. Now, Ian, of course, is an amazing example of young people stepping up to make a massive impact towards changing the world. And if we support, mentor, and believe in him, that he can then pass that on to somebody else. This is how the system works. We can't do it all ourselves. We have to be intentionally focused about who are we passing our batons to. Now, in the space of academics, he pointed out that non-traditional teaching methods and making learning relevant made a huge impact on Ian and will impact the kids that we mentor in our classrooms as well. If all we're doing is teaching curriculum, I don't know if we're going to get that pass the baton effect that we're really looking for. We have to employ non-traditional teaching methods. We have to connect with these kids. We have to mentor. We have to coach. We have to make a personal relationship and a personal connection with the students in our classroom in order to really pass that baton. Now, Ian told us, if you can relate to a kid, it'll make it much easier for them to listen and understand what you are teaching them. We've said it before on the podcast, kids over curriculum. If you can connect before you correct, you will be able to make a huge impact. You might be able to say a mass impact, massive impact on these kids. Now, Ian ended by saying that our classrooms are full of more and more kids than we could possibly imagine who want to do amazing things, but they need teachers who love them and believe in them to support them. And how many times has there been a kid in somebody's classroom that they had so much potential, they wanted to do all these amazing things, they had all this ambition, all these goals, and just nobody told them, hey, I believe in you and you can do it. 
How many times has that happened? How many times has an opportunity gone by where some special kid could have been able to do phenomenal things with their life and they just didn't quite get the encouragement that they needed because maybe we were focused on teaching the curriculum or we were focused on getting the minimum test scores or we were focused on our evaluations. And I'm not saying that you shouldn't be focused on those things. I'm not saying that it's necessarily a bad thing that you are focused on those things. We've all done it. We've all been there. But what I am saying is that we have to become intentional. We have to become deliberate about pouring into those kids because they are there. They do have dreams. They do have goals. They do have ambitions. We just have to help them find it. Last but not least, E ended by saying, let's not give up on them. Let's not give up on them. Let's be the teachers that our kids need and they will walk out of our classrooms and change the world, but it starts with us. I don't need to tell you a nice story from my life. I don't need to wrap this up with any deep, impactful parable. I don't need to do that today. I just wanna ask you a question. Who are you passing the baton to? Who are you passing the baton to? We talk so much in this personal development space about generational wealth. What about generational legacy? Who are you? passing the baton to and what will your legacy be? Not just your legacy personally, the legacy of your classroom, the legacy of your school, the legacy of every student that ever got to work with you and interact with you. What will that legacy be? That's what I want you to think about. Until next time, you're watching Mass Impact, the education podcast. We'll see you on the next one.